Good morning. Officially. Welcome. I'm glad that you're here to worship with us today. Uh, remember, face masks and social distancing are required at all times when you're in the building. Uh, communion will begin next week. Pastor Dean will be back for service and we will be starting communion. Bible study begins Wednesday, July 15th here in the sanctuary. It will be from 9.30 to 10.30 a.m. Again, wear your masks, bring a water bottle if needed, and we will be studying the book of James. Thank you to Terry for doing our videotaping, Lynn for providing our music today, and to Varellen for being our soloist. Now let's silence our phones and voices and prepare our hearts for worship during Lynn's prelude. abounding in steadfast love. Lord, you are good to all, and your compassion is over all your works. We praise you, O Lord. We bless you. We shall tell of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your power, so that all people may know who you are. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Your dominion endures throughout all ages. You, Lord, are faithful in all your words, and you love all your works. The Lord uplifts all those who fall and everyone who is bowed down. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O oh Lord, we come to you in celebration and joy, but we also come to you when we are weary and experiencing heavy burdens in our lives. Thank you for your promise to take our yokes, to be humble and gentle with us, and to give us peace and rest. Open our eyes to see and trust in your gifts. In your name we pray. Amen. The Gospel reading for today is from the 11th chapter of Matthew. Jesus spoke to the crowd, saying, To what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another. We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We wailed, and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say he has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. 
At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you who are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. I am standing up here today to talk to you about anxiety. When I read today's gospel lesson, what I saw was a message to us now, in today's world, addressing our anxiety. I know I have been walking around for the last several months with a knot in my stomach, and a knot in my shoulders, and pressure right here between my eyes, and the feeling that I need to do something. I don't know what, something, about this situation in our world right now. This situation includes our daily struggles, anxieties, and apprehensions. But on top of that, the last several months there has been the coronavirus to contend with. Now, in the last month, there have been protests and eye-opening around issues of racial injustice and inequity in our society. Issues that, I admit, I have been aware of in the back of my mind for most of my life but I have pushed to the side as I have been focused on my personal world, and just handling that often seems like enough from day to day. But the truth is, that isn't enough, because I am called to work in this world, as are each of us. That work includes work inside of ourselves as well as outside of ourselves. And there have been people in our society, people of color, calling out for so long and just as long, many of us have pushed those voices away because we have not had to listen. Because perhaps we have been comfortable. Because their struggles are not our own. But now something has shifted. And I don't know why now so many of us are hearing this call with new ears. Perhaps it is the working of the Holy Spirit opening our ears anew. And it is time we listen because this listening is long overdue. I know that my typical approach to problems is to solve them, because unsolved problems make me anxious. When they are solved, the anxiety is gone for a while, until the next problem arises. And from the outside, this looks like a great coping mechanism, because I get things done. But I've been wondering, does anyone else feel like there are a lot of seemingly unsolvable problems lately? Like me, are you experiencing this floating sense of anxiety that you can't lay your finger on, and you can't make go away? I know as my coping mechanism of problem solving has failed me, I have been forced to stop and to re-examine. More recently, I've been trying to look at this whole time as a gift is a spiritual gift to slow down and to say, all right, if there is a limited amount of control I have over my personal situations in today's world, and I can't do anything to solve the coronavirus, and there is plenty of work I can do around racial justice, but that too makes me anxious, because I am not sure where to begin, and I'm afraid I will screw it up, and it is all so big. And I don't think I'm alone in this. And then I read today's gospel lesson, and it says, Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. 
And that is Jesus inviting us. As Jesus does over and over again to not do this work on our own. And I don't know about you, but I'm tired. I'm tired of not knowing the answers and not being able to solve the problems. And then Jesus invites me to stop trying to pull this load on my own, but to join him. The yoke is a symbol of obedience to God's law and wisdom. Generally, our instinct is to resist yokes and laws, or at least not immediately connect them with the idea of freedom. Through the image of the yoke, however, Jesus invites us to think of God's law and wisdom as a means to surrender, give way, and accept his grace. Rest, ease, lightness. Jesus reframes the idea of a yoke by telling us that a yoke will help us grow as disciples. The gospel links humility to freedom. And so the very first step, the first thing we need to do is to reach out to God and to remember, especially in these times, that there is so much out of our control. And maybe that is okay. Because we as a powerful nation think we have it all together and that we are in control. But ultimately we are not. And this whole experience is humbling to us and perhaps we need to be humbled to move through this and to watch and to listen in the way we need to. There is only so much we can do to stay safe from the virus. And there is much work to be done around issues of racial equity and that work is scary to many of us. However, we have Jesus with us and we have each other. I think many of us are excited and relieved to be back here together as we have been the last couple weeks. But we know this isn't over. Already some restrictions have gone back into place this week. The work of racial equity is a continuous process and even though the protests have quieted down some, the work is ongoing. Inequity in our country is something that we need to continue to take seriously and educate ourselves on. That is our responsibility as just people, as people who call ourselves followers of Christ. I understand the hesitation around that. I know I feel shame that I didn't always have ears to hear this important message. But that does not excuse us from starting the work now. As Maya Angelou put it, do the best you can until you know better. Then when you know better, do better. I think most of us can stand to continue to acknowledge the truths about the way people of color live in our society and the anxiety and fear that they live with on a daily basis. This anxiety and fear of not having control, which may be very new to some of us, is a constant to some in our society. And if this feeling of the last several months has been unpleasant and uncomfortable and hard for you, then I invite you to sit with that and with some compassion, try with God's guiding hand to put yourselves in the position of people of color who are telling us that the institutions that are in place in our nation mean their voices are diminished. And they never know what kind of injustice and fear they are going to encounter when they step out the door each day. So let's commit to a little discomfort ourselves on this weekend when we celebrate our nation's independence. Let us open our ears and engage in these discussions that draw us closer to fulfilling the promise of liberty and justice for all. And to remember that the change that is being asked of us by our brothers and sisters of color is no less than is commanded us by Jesus. And to remember that we are not in this alone. As with Jesus' command to love and to lift each other up is also his invitation. Come to me. All you who are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Amen, and may it be so. Today's hymn is sung by Baron Klein, and it is This Is My Song. This 
pray. Holy God, give us patience and courage to face our world. Thank you for giving us Jesus who offers us his yoke so that we may find rest. May the church always proclaim this good news through words, deeds, and attitudes. Give us the will to take action to end racial disparity. Give us the will to take action to end oppression against women and people who are LGBTQIA. Today we celebrate the independence of our nation and we continue to work for a time when there will be liberty and justice for all. We remember and give thanks for the indigenous people who occupied this land before European settlers arrived. Continue to make us wise as we respond to COVID-19. Move our hearts to make decisions that will keep those around us safe. Keep all who travel safe. We pray for an end to terrorism and war. Bring hope to locations across the globe where there are disasters and weather-related distress. Thank you for our food pantry volunteers and all those who support the pantry. Bring comfort and hope to all who are grieving. Bring your healing touch to all who are ill, including Georgia, Lynn, Ellen, Mike, and anyone else whom we now name out loud or in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Amen. We pray together the traditional words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now let us meditate upon all we have heard here today, as Lynn plays. May God bless you with discontent with easy answers, half-truths, and superficial relationships, so that you will live from deep within your heart. May God bless you with anger at injustice, oppression, abuse, and exploitation of people so that you will work for justice, equality, and peace. May God bless you with tears to shed for those who suffer from pain, rejection, starvation, and war so that you will reach out your hand to comfort them and to change their pain to joy. May God bless you with the foolishness to think you can make a difference in this world so that you will do the things which others tell you cannot be done. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. I invite you to depart and back through the narthex so Gary can begin sanitizing from the front. 